the other day I was working with some customers, showing them how to use digital twins inside Shapes XR. Uh, you know, why would you want to do that? What is a digital twin? So, a digital twin, if you're wondering, it's just a copy of the real world. It can be a 3D scan, it can be low poly, high poly, colored, you know, just wireframe. But essentially you have a copy of something in the real world and then you can uh, do things with it. You can design around it, you can simulate it if it's you know a working simulation of the thing. Uh, you can iterate on that thing. Um, or, you know, in the case of uh, Shapes XR, you can design maybe a, a you know a shopping experience or a video game around that uh, physical location. So in this tutorial, I want to show you guys uh, how to set that up in shapes right now. Um, there are a couple little tricks. Um, I also am experimenting with a new type of tutorial uh, using our hollow note uh, system where you guys can just come into the space uh, yourselves and try it out. Um, I don't know if you can hear that, but there's an airplane up there. Sorry about that. Probably should have gotten a better microphone for this. But anyway, so now let's transition to the hollow note mode. Here on my iPhone, I was in polycam first and used the photogrammetry mode to take photos of this area. It took me maybe like, you know, maybe three minutes to scan the space. Then I uploaded it and make sure that you use the uh, the lowest quality setting so it comes into shapes nicely. Uh, I exported that to GLTF uh, and then saved that right to my files on my local device. Um, then I was able to go into shapes.app uh, in Safari and just log in, uh, go to my imported area, go to the folder that I wanted to upload to and then I was able just to hit up, uh, browse, go to choose files, found the file, and then it uploaded. Uh, did it all for my phone. Okay, so using the shapes menu, I then went into my asset import area here, uh, and I was able to uh, browse to find the file that I wanted, clicked it, then uh, making sure that I set the scale to 100%, 1x, uh, I see a nice little preview of this uh, space. I can rotate it left and right, up and down, just to make sure it's kind of right. And then I hit the spawn button. Boop. Okay, so now I have my digital twin. Uh, it comes in at scale. I can walk around. It really feels like I'm back there at the store. Um, and so now what I can do is I can, you know, come in here and just start mocking things up if I would like to. Um, and I can zoom out. And I'll show you on the next frame uh, why you might want to do that. So you take your two hands, you grab these little blue buttons, uh, your grip buttons, you push them down, and then you push your hands together. So you zoom out and look, I'm way up here. I'm giant. So now I want you to try to zoom out. So hold down both those grip buttons, try to, to be the same size as me. Perfect. You did it. That was great. Okay, so at this scale and size, uh, it's easy to do things like draw on a large uh, object like this, other things like, you know, pull in assets and just drop them all over the place. Um, and then when you're done, you press up on your non dominant controller uh, control stick and you teleport back down to this little guy down here to the viewpoint and then you can experience what it's like to be inside the model again to be at live uh, life scale then uh, I went back to my asset library I grabbed um, a couple of my Figma assets um, so you click on Figma um, and then you get to see a little preview and then there's some options over here uh, for how to import this so um, probably the most important one at this point is this UI element one. If you have that selected, you can use our DMM system, which is kind of a, a system that allows you to pick what distance you want to bring that image in at, and then um, any other image that you bring in at that same uh, distance. This is one meter uh, that I picked right here. 
it'll come in at the same pixel density. So if you have a bunch of images, you want them all to kind of like be the same size, um, uh, even though maybe they're not the same, um, you know, like dimensions, um, that you can bring them in, bring them in at the same DMM scale or distance, one meter, and they'll all come in at the same DPI. So I did that with all these uh, items up here. They have the same rounded edges, uh, radiuses. Uh, same with the inspiration on the front. Brought that in as another layer, and I was able to align these uh, perfectly to each other. That's that's how you do that. Then I tried a few different layouts. You know, maybe these things could be above you, but oh, maybe there's already signs up there, or maybe we use the floor space. This is sort of unused virtual space. Uh, at least in a store like this. So the next step after trying these out is to try them in situ. Of course, you could be inside the store in mixed reality um, using pass-through to design all of this in, in this space, um, but that's not always practical. Sometimes you're at home, sometimes you don't have access to this space. Um, so that's why working in a digital twin like this is useful. In this next space that I'm gonna show you, I'll show you, you know, if you are in that space again, how to align the space up so that your digital twin works as an occlusion mesh, uh, which means it'll block things that are virtual uh, and it'll really increase the realism and allow you to really mix realities between the virtual and the physical. Hey, welcome to my home office. So in my home office, I used Polycam to scan this. Um, a long time ago um, and then I you know brought it in at you got to make sure it comes in at one scale 100% uh, cent scale and I brought it into shapes and then the next step you want to do uh, to get your digital twin working is you go into room scale mode all right so when you come in here you're just in a virtual space it may look like it's a real space but it's just a virtual space um, and so you're gonna to need to align this to the real space. Uh, I'm gonna make this smaller, just turn on pass through real quick to see that I'm in fact in this space, in my real physical office. Um, but I need room scale mode, so I'm uh, to align this and have it be persistent. So I'm gonna hit, uh, it'll say there's no room found, so create a new room. Okay, and if you're on the Quest 3, you get this awesome scanning experience. And for some reason, sometimes it goes into this weird low res mode, but it still works, so don't worry about that. Um, in the future, we're gonna try to use this mesh uh, and have it automatically import into shapes, so you don't have to go through this process. But right now, this is the best way to get the highest resolution uh, mesh into shapes, uh, is to use Polycam. Uh, but in the near future, we won't have to do this. Okay, so that looks good. Room visible. Save to complete. So it'll go back into shapes. Um, it'll, if you're not already at 100% scale, it'll ask you to teleport to where you are. So now I can't move the, the space. Um, I can't just grab this and move around. It's stuck. But as you see, when the pastor is on, it's, it's not in the right spot. It's way off. So that, that's where you go to edit offset. Now I just grab the world uh, and I, you know, I can see this window here and I'll align my window to the real window um, and align the rest of the world to the real world just by grabbing my grips like this and moving them around a little bit. That seems about right. Okay. Yes, very nice. If it's not correct on the height, then you can address the height here. Uh, and I hit done. Okay. So now, the way I've set this up, it's a little tricky. Um, typically, you put stuff on the background that you that are things like the environment that you want to be the same from frame to frame, or from stage to stage. But in this case. I've put the um, the scan, the polycan scan, on the first stage, and I've, then I'll duplicate that. Uh, and on the second stage, I will just go into 
uh, pass through mode, uh, pass through color. So I go over to color, uh, pick the pass through material right here. Uh, and now if I go and paint this material on this scan, you'll notice it's pretty much perfectly aligned to my real world. Um, so now if I, I'm going to apply that, hit trigger. So now um, I have two versions of my world. Uh, one for other people to come in and, or for myself, if I want to design something in this space and I'm not here, I can come to frame one and I can see this polycam scan. Or if I'm in this space, I can go to frame two and I'll see the real space um, through pass through. Looks like I raised this up a little too high. Um, and so in this way, you can have a combination of remote people and in-person people. Um, you can have multiple people in this physical space using shared spatial anchors, and you can have multiple people, multiple people come from different spaces, different physical spaces remotely and join me here. And because, uh, and then you put all your assets, all your objects on the background layer so everybody can see it. And because of that, on both uh, versions of reality, you get real-time shadows. Um, if I move over to one, you can see the real-time shadows on the scan. Um, and you can see other people, um, just like this hollow note here. You can have remote people come in and be any scale they want. They could be tiny on the table here. Uh, they could be large, you know, looking out the window like the BFG. Um, now I've invited Inga into my house. So, hey Inga, here. We can, Hello. uh... thank you. Yeah, we can create stuff together. Maybe we can come over here and, uh, decorate my, uh, my shelf with some different objects. Ooh. And then I can... I, I shouldn't move, right? But I just want to give you some green stuff. You can move whatever you want. Yeah, so that's the process. Um, so just to summarize, some of the advantages of using digital twins like this is being able to uh, not be in the space, but be able to design for the space. Uh, then when you're in the space, being able to use that, um, that scan as a mesh, uh, so you get good occlusion, as well as being able to have a mixture of people who are present and people who are remote. Um, and all everybody be able to feel like they're in that physical location so yeah anyway that's the that's the video uh let us know if you would like some more of these uh comments and all that okay bye guys